Welcome everyone. This is Crown with Glory Reborn and I want to do a special video on when they don't love you back, right? I think we've all been through this. Um, unrequited love. How do you get over it? And um, on this channel, it's a hot topic. It really is. Um, and even last night I was talking to a friend of mine who I've been kind of life coaching, mentoring because he's, he's a little bit younger than me. Okay. But, um, he just went through a breakup and, and we were talking about this and just the whole grieving process. How do you get over this when you love somebody so much and uh, clearly they don't feel the same because you know for you you might walk to the ends of the earth to to get this person or to be with this person but uh, clearly they do they're not willing to to do the same for you and so um, what I'm gonna say in this video is not gonna be your standard typical advice which would be oh you know it's gonna be okay you know, you're going to find somebody better. <laughs> just, I mean, you might, you might. Okay. But, um, if you're really going through a, a breakup, that doesn't feel good to tell people that. Okay. Because they don't want somebody better. They want that person. That's what they want, you know? So it doesn't feel good, you know, oh, you're going to be okay. You'll get over it. They, that's not what they're after. And so I'm not going to speak to that crowd. And I'm going to tell you, if you're watching right now and you're the kind of person that has gone through a breakup and you could be just cheered up and fully recovered from somebody talking to you like that, um, you know what? You're doing way better than, than some other people. You don't need this video, okay? But for those of you who have really, really been hit hard by feeling the loss of a love of a lifetime, right? I want to speak to that. One phrase that comes to my mind, rejection is God's protection. A lot of times when we have these breakups, this doesn't feel very loving, right? Because a lot of times it opens up soul wounds, of not feeling the acceptance and the belonging that this might go way deep back into your childhood even. This is why I wish people would be less casual about their relationships, more mindful, okay? Because when you tell someone, I love you, which I've learned means different things to different people. For some people, they say it very innocently. Other people, when they say it, they mean it more so eternally and so when you tell them I love you and then you oh change your mind my feelings faded for some of us we don't understand right your feelings faded then you must have never loved at all what what was that that you were saying right because if you really love like I do you love eternally but not everybody is like that okay so when you get somebody that flips a switch on you like that, goes from I love you to my feelings have faded or whatever their story is, I fell out of love or who knows what, that opens up a soul wound that some people have in them. And, I, and, and this is like, if you are one of those people who loves more innocently than, say, eternally, Please be careful about running around telling people that you love them, okay? Because some people, when they hear that, they take it very seriously. When you tell them you want to get married, spend the rest of your life with them, they take that very seriously. And for you to just kind of change your mind and bolt out of there is like destroying their dreams. And what are their dreams? Their dreams are likely about healing something that was either lost or never fulfilled within them going way back in their childhood. So um, on the flip side of this, I got to say, if you've encountered this and that's why you're listening, we have to understand that when people do this and they reject us and use that word loosely, okay, 
but basically they, they turn down the offer to be committed, to take the relationship to the next level. That rejection is protection from somebody who is basically more or less not in alignment with your value system. Another thing is that I've had to learn how to accept it and let go of the fantasy that this person is ever going to change or come back. And I've had to honor free will, which has really been hard, you know, uh, particularly if you're an empath and you really perceive a connection there on a spiritual level. Um, and you feel this faded union with this person, but they're just kind of running from it because maybe the connection is too intense. It scares them or um, they just feel like they can't live up to the expectations or however it is, you know, whether they're right or they're wrong. At the end of the day, we have to honor their free will. And it's not that we agree with it. When I say accept, it's not that you agree with it. It's that you accept that this person has the right to make their mistakes and to even make the right choices in their own timing and to go through their own process. They have the right to choose not to honor the connection because some of you, yes, you've been in a connection with somebody who knew they knew there was something special there, but they ran from it or they tried to ignore it or deny it or thought they were going to go find it in other people only to discover that they haven't. However, it's manifested for you. It can be painful, but at the end of the day, what's most beneficial, I feel, is letting go of the fantasy that this person is ever going to like change or come back or say they're sorry um, because as long as you're home holding on to this fantasy it's really hard to be at peace and get on with your life it holds you stuck in that grieving process um, holding out for hope that one day they're going to see things the same way that you do and when that never happens it's almost like you're never really healing and you keep reopening the wound with every attempt that you make to reconcile um, that gets you know pushed away or turned down some of you you know have been in your breakups were involving relationships that were very long term others of you you were involved in something that didn't last very long and i think one thing that haunts us is the unanswered questions and i think when you haven't been involved with somebody very long, usually it's just a person didn't want to hurt your feelings and that's why they're not really telling you, right? I mean, I think we've all done this, myself included. You know, I remember I broke up with a guy after like two months and I found out years later that he was, um, it really upset him. It really upset him because I never, I never gave an explanation. I just kind of disappeared, <laughs> went off radar. Um, I knew internally at the time, like he and I are not on the same page. We have different value systems. He was a jokester. I'm a serious soul. And I wanted somebody that I could have, you know, serious conversations with. I was like an intellectual. He was a jock. It just, I mean, we were attracted to each other, but as an Aquarian, an air sign, I just didn't get that connection with him that I was wanting on a on a verbal and mental level. And I just knew that it was not going to work. I mean, he couldn't even hold a conversation on the phone. So, you know, I didn't want to tell him that I don't want to hurt his feelings, but you know, and I was much younger at the time, but sometimes people just don't want to say it. Right. But now for those of us who have been in longer relationships and we're like, well, wow, why did you just throw years away that we invested, you know, or I invested or months, months, years of investment. Why do you just walk away? You know, especially if you were involved with somebody who was like promising you the moon and the stars, right? Which is kind of what my friend was has gone through recently. Like 
not understanding how a person went from zero to 60 so fast and then they completely 180 it all right over the course of like seven months how does this happen and this wanting an explanation wanting to understand and not getting it even when you ask for it you're not given and like in his case oh, I don't know I'm not sure I just Eh, you know, my feelings faded, things changed, like no compute, right? Some of us just that racking our brains. What do you mean? Like, how do you just fall in and out of love like that? That doesn't make any sense to some of us, right? Again, it goes back to this needing to let go and honor the free will that um, there are going to be some things that we're not going to understand in this life. They might be confused within themselves or they just don't want to hurt your feelings. But I think oftentimes, whether it's spoken or unspoken, at some level, whether conscious or unconscious, the person who does the breaking up does so because they know that there's an incompatibility with values. And there is an unwillingness to come into alignment. And you might have a really intense uh, connection with this person and, and an intense, uncommon chemistry with this person but then when it just kind of like um fizzles out about as fast as it fired up what is the lesson maybe this is a spiritual lesson for you to really take a closer look at what real love is um, not just the feeling of it the illusion of it the ideals involved with it but the action that follows genuine real love when their memory haunts you let me say one thing that i try to ask myself to be constructive in those times is what's missing in my life i was recently talking to a client about that who's going through a troubled marriage and started kind of looking back at previous wow why did i marry this person and i should have maybe married the guy before and, you know, just you just start doing a little bit of karmic life review, like, okay, did I pick the wrong guy here? What happened? And maybe there's something that was lost that you had with this person that you never got again with anybody else. And you're trying to recover what was lost. And if you are going down memory lane, feeling nostalgic, ask yourself, what is it that I'm trying to recover here? What feelings did I lose that I'm trying to get back? Because that's really key information to your healing. It doesn't necessarily mean that that person is going to give you that, right? Because that might have been for a time and a season in your life that has expired, okay? But a, a lot of times we do attach those feelings and emotions to that person, especially if you had a very unique connection or bond with them that you've never had before or since. You really attach these feelings like, how will I ever get this back without this person, you know? Um, and that's, that's a really, that's a real feeling, okay? Not, don't ignore or deny it, all right? But um, at the same time, really tune in because whatever it is that you're trying to recapture by recalling their memory or the memories you had with them, that's really illuminating to you what it is you're trying to restore in your life, but that ultimately you need to commit to restoring with or without them. So a lot of times I also get um, clients or people comment about synchronicities and um, people getting, you know, like seeing 1111 or you keep seeing this person's name or uh, you maybe get dreams and visions and then this person is wondering, well, does that mean they're coming back? Does that mean I should reconcile with them? What does that mean? You know, Pfft, believe me, I've gone through that myself, you know, those same experiences and questions about them and, and what I've learned after going through this probably for like the last 10 years, uh, what I've learned is that it might be that spirit is bringing it to your attention because there's yet again something that you need to heal from and release in that connection. It is not necessarily that you need to return back to them or that they're going to return back to you, but there's something left unhealed in the connection. 
it might also be especially if you had if you're an empath you might be picking up on the fact that they are going through something uh, very troubling but again it's not necessarily that you were to reach out and reconnect with this person um, it could simply be that you just need to pray for them and that's what I've done I you know I have somebody in my life who I've you know they show up in my dreams a lot and I get frustrated about it I've even yelled at God about it I'm like and what do you want me to do they don't want me back they're not doing anything they're not even trying they're not even talking to me like why are you sending me this crap I don't want to know I'm tired I'm tired why don't you send me somebody who wants to participate in a relationship you know it's frustrating what I've learned to do with this over the years is just to not get wrapped up into it emotionally like don't give so much of my emotion to it but really redirect the emotion in more of a constructive way where I pray for this person most recently in the last couple years when they show up in my dreams they're still not doing anything they're just sitting there waiting for me to 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 start the conversation or to take action or to make an offer but they're just sitting there in the dream they're they're following me around or uh you know just in my presence like waiting for me to make the first move and I'm like oh heck no uh -uh. I'm not gonna do this this person is not they're thinking of me they're looking at me but they're not talking and taking action and I can't work with this therefore I'm just gonna pray for them I don't know what their situation is entirely but I'm picking up on their energy It's showing up in my dreams and I know now it's not God telling me go try to reconcile it's just to pray for them and again lovingly release them to their own choices okay and their choices are very clear I'm gonna tell you whether they're communicating to you or not you know what people's choices are based on what they're doing their actions tell you don't I say this repeatedly on my channel do not listen to what people say listen to what they do that speaks volumes you want to know the truth about people's motives and intentions ignore what they say if this person is not calling you up is not showing up is not trying to f make amends with action thoughtful action then they are not ready to reconcile they're not um, of course I mean if you wronged them and you need you owe them apology then yeah maybe it's the other way around but if you broke up with them and you told them I don't want this anymore I mean maybe maybe it's a little bit different right but if they broke up with you and they're not coming back around they're not saying sorry and you might have even gone back and said come on let's work this out and they never never year after year month after month week after week whatever how many times you've tried to put it back together they always resist and they can never find a way let it go this person is not committed to what you are committed to they don't share values and they are not committed to coming into alignment with your values and here's the sad thing is that some of you have been wronged you were deeply in love and you you just got caught up with a wayward soul sorry to say that and that's why I put a lot of my resources a lot of resources out here on on healing from narcissistic abuse and avoiding emotionally unavailable people and recognizing you know uh, alpha males fake alphas versus the real authentic ones avoiding beta males I try to put all that stuff out so that you can avoid this stuff because a lot of times I don't really think that anybody's in not entirely um, most people are not really intent on harming others but there are insecurities and inadequacies that come out in relationships and people recoil when they are not ready to mature and grow up and you cannot do the spiritual work for others you can't this is something I've learned the hard way like no amount of effort is going to make up for your partner's lack of effort their level of effort you can see very clearly if you just sit back and and listen to their actions you know how much they're applying themselves to maturing themselves and bettering the relationship and here's another thing when somebody basically communicates to you in word and or deed that they're not ready 
to take the relationship to the next level. They're feeling challenged. They're dealing with a life lesson that you don't need to cheat them out of. Um, I was just saying this to my friend last night. It, this is sad. I mean, I'm in my 40s now, and so I can now say, you know, a, what's common for my age group is a lot of people coming out of marriages, looking back on their lives, thinking uh, about the one that got away or thinking about why did I marry this person instead of that person? And when you're in your 20s, you know, there's a tendency to think, well, maybe I can do better or maybe I can make it work with this person over here. Uh, but when you get into your 40s or 50s, you, you start looking back at, wait a minute, I let some opportunities get away. And that's when the lessons start really sinking in that in your 20s, you might have thought you could have avoided or evaded that you didn't have to grow up. You would just find somebody who was going to accommodate this immaturity and it never happened, you know, uh, or you married somebody who thought that their immaturity would be accommodated. And, you, you know, you come to the end of yourself where you're like, I can't do this. So, yeah, if somebody is basically communicating to you that they have a life lesson that, you know, they need to learn and they're not ready again release it let go accept that they're going to learn in their own time in their own way and unfortunately sometimes that's separate i know it's painful sometimes people don't figure out till 20 30 years later oh shit i i walked away from the person that was right for me we can't really dictate when and how people learn this and figure this out unfortunately people get wounded in the process. And so the point of it is, if, if you've been wounded by this process, you got to heal yourself. you got to heal yourself. And I said earlier, you know, that sometimes the reason why people break up is because for them, it's just easier to start new with somebody else. Uh, particularly if you're dealing with fire signs, um, you know, it can be easier for them to just start fresh with somebody else blank slate or if you're dealing with narcissists we see that a lot again in my age group um people who are recycled narcissists one of my clients said that she's been on a, a dating site and she avoids them now because she's like this is just a bunch of recycled narcs who go from relationship relationship to relationship because it's easier for them to just start a new relationship than to work on the one that they have I mean, really work on it, okay? Not this fake working on it. <laughs> and some people, if they're unwilling to put in the work and grow and make the necessary sacrifices, good riddance. If you take that, you know, approach, like this is actually a blessing, then it's easier to release it and let it go. And like I said before, sometimes these people, they know something that you don't. They don't want to tell you what the real reason is. And it might not even have anything to do with you. It might have to, yes, be completely them. Because some of them know that if they would have leveled with you and told you what the problem is, like, hey, um, actually, I don't really make as much money as I told you. Or um, actually, um, I'm still married to somebody or... <laughs> whatever fill in the blank okay whatever their excuses um if you find these things out then you'll make the decision for them and they don't want that you know some of people are very sensitive about staying in control and being in in a in a position of power to be the decision maker and so they would rather them be the first to tell you no than you be the first to tell them no and then you're none the wiser over it the whole time thinking it's something wrong with you when really if you'd been given all the information you would have known that it wasn't anything wrong with you so i know some of you are probably going to comment down below and mention you know soul ties cutting cords and all of that look i've done it i've done spiritual house cleaning i've done all the spiritual advice from the new agers and the um Christian perspective I've done it all and I can tell you um, that when you really love someone it's eternal and that is why all of these little rituals and cord cutting ceremonies and whatnot 
are kind of rendered null and void, at least in my experience. If you want to give it a try, go on and give it a try. There's a lot of resources on YouTube for that. But personally, it hasn't worked for me because when you really love someone, it is eternal. It is everlasting. And so all you can do is, like I told my friend last night, you take it as you accept it. This is part of my life. Um, this didn't work out for me. I love this person. I loved past tense, present, future. I love this person eternally. Okay, I wish them the best. I am disappointed and hurt that this did not work out. And I will continue to intercede in prayer for them as spirit leads me. Um, but I accept uh, that they have chosen to take their life in a different direction. I accept that they are not in alignment with my values. And I release them lovingly. And yeah, sometimes that might feel like you're carrying a wound around. You know, this is like what I told my friend last night who's grieving so much right now. Um, it's, I imagine like somebody who deals with chronic illness, it, there's, there's flare ups, right? And, and when you have a flare up, when you have a dream or a vision or synchronicity, somebody's brought back to your remembrance and it's painful. In that moment, you tune in to yourself, your needs in the here and now, what do I need? What is it that I'm missing that I want, I need to find a way to fill in my life and you remind yourself, this is my reality currently, not the fantasy. And I'm making a choice to accept that what is, is, and make the best out of it, manage the pain in the most constructive way possible for me and for them. I hope I've said something here that's helped you. It's been very long-winded. I didn't think it was going to be this long, but I do hope that I've helped somebody here if you're going through any grief from a breakup. I know that I am wishing you guys, as always, I'm wishing you all the best. Be blessed. Mm -hmm.